Shalom, Thawada, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakodash, for giving us the understanding of the Holy Bible through their men, that being the apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone who are worthy of double honors, and Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakodash, Brakatham, to the elect of Israel. Now, this was just brought to my attention by the beloved the elder apostle, Aram Lab, and I want to bring it to the attention of the hopeful elect of Israel, right, the congregation out there. Those of you blessed Israelites that are, you know, following Yahweh Bashmah or Shai, you know, via his servants, the prophets, beginning with the apostles of Great Millstone on down. Um, you know, this isn't going to be no prolific lesson or no long drawn out lesson. However, you know, I do want to convey the time that we're living in and, sh and really show you the marvelous works that our Lord, right, our God, which is the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their descendants in whom we are, the Israelites, all right? The God of Israel, his name in ancient Hebrew is Yahweh. And we serve and worship Yahweh through his beloved son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. That's going to gather the elect and deliver the elect of Israel from the coming destruction, all right? The time of World War Three, And, um, you know, our Lord's visitation, pursuant to Matthew 24 and verse 31. And that's who we're hoping to be. You know, we're praying, we're hoping, and we're giving diligence to make our calling and election sure that when Yahweh Shai, you know, does arrive, you know, we're found worthy to be delivered upon his return. But anyway, as you see here in this um, article, or the headline at least, you know, those of us that know these scriptures, that understand the prophecies and whatnot, and know the words of our Lord, you know, when we see a headline like this, you know, that really there should be one scripture that pops up in your mind, you know, first and foremost, and that's Matthew 24, all right? I believe it's verse 22. We can get that in a minute, you know, concerning what our Lord said about the days being shortened for the sake of the elect, okay? And like I said, our Lord is doing a marvelous work in the earth right now, man, especially as it pertains to Bible prophecy, so as you see, it says, scientists baffled as Earth spins faster than usual. And that in itself, you know, should remind us of what it says in Daniel 12, and I believe verse 10, where roughly paraphrasing it says, and none of the wicked shall understand. Okay, the wicked we know is speaking about Esau, Edom, the Edomites, which are these so-called white people, you know, pursuant to Malachi 1 and verse 4. Well, this is a prime example of none of the wicked understanding, okay, understanding what Yahweh Bashna Shai is doing in the earth, okay. Scientists left baffled, pardon me, you know, this website is going crazy. Anyway, it says, scientists have been left baffled after discovering the earth is spinning faster than normal, making days shorter than usual. <laughs> You know, this is beautiful because our Lord is basically hastening, you know, his coming and he's hastening the end of the world, okay, in which that's the time that we're living in right now. You know, the end of an age, the end of a time period, the end of a rulership. And I'm speaking about the end of Esau's rulership, okay, Esau being the so-called white man, beginning with the central bank and families, right? You know, these wicked people, that are currently ruling this world in wickedness, man. You know, we're living at the end of their world, the end of their age. And that in itself, again, is pursuant to Matthew, the book of Matthew, that is chapter 24, and I believe verse 3, okay, where you had the disciples of our Lord inquiring about Yahweh Shai's return and the end of the world. Okay, and when you look up that word world in the Greek, Concerning that scripture, you're going to find the Greek word eon, which means a time period, an age, or a rulership. And pretty much we're living at the end of Esau's rulership, okay? You can also read about the end of the world when you go to the book of Second Ezra 6 and verse 9. It tells us that Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. But nonetheless, you know, what we're seeing here in, in the news is beautiful because this aligns perfectly with the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Let's get that real quick. And again, I'm not going to make this long, but 
This is, um, you know, to boost the faith of the hopeful elect of Israel. You know, to show you clearly the time that we're living in. Okay. This is Matthew 24 and verse 22. It says, And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Okay. And this is speaking about the time that we're living in. And really, the time that we're approaching. And we're approaching some very perilous times. Okay. Um, a time like never before on the earth where all hell is going to break loose in the earth, all right, in this current society that we're living in, you know, and it's pretty much going to be every man for himself very shortly. And of course, I'm alluding to the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 and verse 7, Daniel 12 and verse 1, you know, the books of Second Ezra 15 and chapter 16. You know, all these scriptures go into the time that we're coming into, you know, again, the time of Jacob's trouble. And what's heavy is that, you know, as um, disastrous and as perilous as, you know, that time is going to be, which is going to be a very horrific time on earth, you know, and we're going to need the protection of our Lord, you know, during that time, which is why, you know, we're given diligence to make our calling and election sure in hopes that our Lord will have mercy upon us in those days. But pretty much during that time, our Lord is really going to hasten, you know, um, the end, so to speak. Okay. So again, it says, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And it's all about the elect. Okay. As a matter of fact, if we jump down to verse 30 and verse 31, you know, we get understanding on who our Lord's coming back to gather, all right, and deliver. This is Matthew 24 and verse 30. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, referring to our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And this is speaking about the return of our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai, in particular the fashion in which he's coming back in, okay? The clouds are referring to what people out there call UFOs. Unidentified flying objects, if you will, or so-called spaceships, but by an actual fact, you know, these are the spiritual vehicles that Allah's gonna come back in. And they're known in the Bible as the chariots of Israel, okay? And that's how our Lord's gonna return. It says in verse 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together. Who? His elect. All right. And this is speaking about the elect of Israel. No other nation on earth besides the nation of Israel, and more so the elect of Israel, you know, is going to be delivered. Okay. That's who our Lord's going to come back to save from this coming destruction. You know, the nuclear missiles, the ICBMs, you know, World War Three, if you will. It says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the earth. And that's speaking about our people, or the elect of our people, to be exact, that are scattered amongst you know, all the different nations around the world, globally. And the reason why our people are scattered in the first place you know, is due to the curses that fell upon our people, you know, us being scattered as, as a nation. You read about that in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 64. And the reason why we were scattered in the first place is because, you know, we were disobedient as a nation. You know, we transgressed the laws of our heavenly father, Yahweh. Therefore, the curses fell upon our people, which again, you can read in the book of Deuteronomy 28, start from verse 15, all the way down to verse 68. Okay. So it says, his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And that's who our Lord's going to come back and uh, deliver, you know, from the ICBMs, from World War Three, You know, and really from the perilous time that we're coming into, like I said, the time of Jacob's trouble, all right? Which, during the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, you're going to have Esau, Edom, fully implement 
his New World Order, right? The Novus Order Seclorum that you currently read on the back of your one US dollar bill, which right now he's branding as the Great Reset, the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And pretty much at the helm of his Fourth Industrial Revolution, uh, this so called white man, the man of sin, Esau Edom, the Edomites, beginning with these central banking families. That's when they're going to um, enslave the masses of people by way of the Empire microchip. You know, which according to the prophecy is the mark of the beast that you read here in the book of Revelation 13 and 16. And it says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. We know that the mark is speaking about the Empire microchip. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And these Edomites, okay, along with their military might, their power, they're going to go buck wild in trying to achieve their new world order. That's why it says this here, when you go to Revelation 12, and verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil, the devil being the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, the slanderer, right? The false accuser, if you will, because that's really what the word devil means. It says, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he have but a short time, which aligns perfectly with what we're, um, you know, seeing here in the news concerning our Lord speeding up the days, you know, shortening the time, if you will. And only the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai can do that. That's why it says this here, when we go to the Apocrypha, I believe it's the book of um, Sirach, chapter 18. I guess we'll close out from here. Let's see. Yep. This is the book of Sirach, also known as the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 18 and verse 1. It says, He that liveth forever have created all things in general. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but he who governeth, another word for govern, is control, right? And the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he controls time, okay? Because he's outside of time, you know? <laughs> That's the mysteries of um, our power, the power that we serve. Yahweh. Anyway, it says, Who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will, including time. Hence, what we're seeing here in the news. Scientists baffled as earth spins faster than usual. So all praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh. Basham, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, for that. For Yahweh Bashmel Shah waking us up, you know, giving us the spirit to do these lessons, to prophesy the, the downfall of the so-called white man Esau Edom. And may the Lord give us the spirit to endure unto the end. Because that's what it's all about too. Enduring unto the end. Okay, as Yahweh Shai said, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Anyway, Lord will use edified and Lord willing, Yahweh Bashmel Shai gives me another opportunity to do um, another lesson. Shalom.